Hello everybody and welcome to part 2 of my pick and place tutorial using Kuka and Grasshopper. In part 1 we set up a pretty straightforward script to pick and place a brick and in this part 2 we're going to focus on picking up multiple objects, placing them in a bit more of a fancy pattern as well as setting up some digital input output and maybe a wait command. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is we want to set up multiple objects to pick up. So for that we're going to go set sequence and grab a series command. We've got three inputs. The first is the start. We're happy with zero. The step number. Step number is we're going to use the Y size of our brick. And then the count is how many bricks we want to make a copy of. So our brick count for this, double click the canvas, type in three for three bricks. Put that into our count. Might keep that over there because that's a pretty serious parameter. Now we want to move our original brick. So under transform, Euclidean, we'll grab a move command. We're going to move our original brick geometry into the G input. And then trajectory, we're going to use vector under vector unit Y. So Z, get rid of that, vector, unit Y, and take our series and put them into our trajectory. Now we see we've got a bit of a problem where the bricks we've moved are colliding with our table. A quick way to reverse that direction is right click on our input of our vector, we'll put in an expression x times negative 1 to reverse all our numbers and let's move them in negative y direction instead of positive. So now we can hide our original brick and we can insert our new three bricks into our existing script. So we'll take our new geometry and put it in our deconstruct B rep, which of course breaks our script and we will also take our new geometry and put them into our visualization which is just our orient command. Now as we learnt from my drawing tutorial and part one of this obviously we don't want complicated data trees going to the robot because it tries to treat each data tree at the same time so we're going to flatten our centroid output right click on it and select flatten and that simplifies our data tree as is indicated by our Wire, wire display. So now that we've set up our three bricks for pickup, it's a matter of referencing them on our place. So we'll select what we've created here with our brick count. Click, hold down the Alt key and drag our components and release, which makes a copy. And instead of our brick geometry, we will drag our place location into our geometry because that's what we want to move then we're going to instead of our step size being y size of our brick we're going to use the x size because we're going to rotate them to stack them in a pyramid and we see that extends them out lengthwise we don't really need to reverse the direction for this but what we do want is we want to reduce the scale of how far we're moving them. So instead of having a x times minus 1 in our expression, we're going to change that to x times 0.66 to move them a third of the distance of a brick. That relocates our points down the positive y and brings them in 30% closer. Now that we have our three new place locations, we can update our orient, orient with that geometry to show our three brick placements, which is pretty boring, just three bricks in a row. So what we're going to do is we're going to split them up to do something a bit more interesting. So under set, list, list item, we're going to double click. We know we've got three bricks, so we're going to create a new number slider, zero less than symbol two. So we've got three 
values on that number slider. We're going to put it into not the list. We're going to put that into our list item input. Select both of them. Click, hold down Alt again and drag and one more time for each brick. Now our list is our geometry. So we'll take that into each of our list items. Change the middle one to be one and the last one to be two. So now we've got each brick point. Perfect. With the three bricks, now we want to move the middle one up so that we can stack it. So transform Euclidean move command. We're going to take our middle point as the geometry. The trajectory we want to be in the z direction, so under vector, vector z. And of course, we want to move it up our brick height because we're stacking bricks on bricks. Go back, we've got our brick height here. We'll use that parameter to our height and we've moved our point up exactly one brick height. So now that we've done that, we can simply put them into the plane that we want to use for the robot. So under vector plane, we'll grab a new XY plane component and we'll put them in and we'll make sure we put them in the direct order. So brick one goes into the first input and we'll grab our final brick hold down shift and put it in and then our last brick is the brick that we've raised and we'll put that into the input of our plane as well now we can update our orientation with that plane now we see we've got a brick levitating which of course is not what we want so to rectify that we will create a plane under vector tab plane rotate plane We'll take our new planes for our place location. Now we need to set the angle, which of course will be set in radian. So under maths, trigonometry, grab a radians command, put that into our angle, double click your canvas, zero, less than symbol 90. We want to rotate them 90 degrees and we'll set the maximum to 360 just in case someone starts playing with our script. They can't break it. Put that in for our angle and now update our orient, orient and now we've rotated them around so that they're stacked. So now that we've got the place positions where we want, we now need to have a look at our commands going to the KUKA. Now our weave command is broken, which we can tell from the red and we're getting the broken error. All inputs must have as many elements as input one. So we've got the three inputs coming from our original placement, but we haven't updated with the rest. So that means that this place command is now redundant. We can delete that. We'll take our new place and we'll replace it into our existing script. It should give us a working weave command and if we preview that, hopefully it should work. Drops the first brick. The second brick. And then the final brick stacked on top. Wonderful. Alright. So that's working. But, let's say we've got a digital input output that controls our vacuum or physical gripper. So we're going to include that into our command weave. Let's move this across a little bit. Let's make a bit more room in here as well. Right, so we know that our linear movement is moving, we've got to the point, to the top, which moves to the top of our brick then linear down to the bottom. So what we want to do is before it moves back up, we're going to put in a digital IO. So under KUKA utilities, we're going to grab a KUKA PRC set digital out, which gives us our digital commands. 
mine is set to three. In order to turn that on, we're going to go under parameters, input Boolean toggle. I'm going to say digital three, which is what my cook is set up with. Turn on, so set our Boolean switch to true. And we're going to place that into command three, which obviously gives us an error because what we exactly what we had before, this is only giving one piece of data. We know we've got three bricks, which means we need to turn that on and off three times. So we could duplicate that simply three times manually, but of course we're working in parametric software, so we want to do it parametrically. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab under set sequence. We're going to duplicate our data with the duplicate data command. Our data that's coming in is our digital on. Now the number of times we want to duplicate it is the same as everything else. So we're going to use under set list. We're going to grab a list length component. We can grab any one of our earlier pieces of parameters, pieces of data coming through. That should be three. One locally defined value, three. So we're going to put that into our number. Now we're duplicating our data three times, put it in and everything works. So that's weaving that in three times, which is perfect. Now, if you're using a vacuum gripper like mine or even a physical gripper, you've probably got some time before the air reaches or it actually performs its task. So what we're gonna do is put in a simple weight command. So on the Kuka PRC, utilities, we'll grab a PRC weight, put that on our canvas as well and include that in four. Again, we've got the same problem. So we'll click our duplicate data, hold down Alt and copy that. Put our command into its input and use that again to duplicate that three times. So now we've got a wait command. That's def defined automatically at one. We can define it for longer. One second generally is enough. And now that we've done our command, we want to turn our gripper off when it's placing the bricks. So we come down, we come to our point above, we move down, and before we move back above, we want two additional command inputs. You just have to zoom in on your weaver to get your little plus and negative symbols to add in additional commands. We're going to copy and paste our digital and weights we can hold down alt again change it to false we're going to put in a turn off our gripper in command 8 and then a wait before it moves back up so there we've we've got the turn on the vacuum gripper when it's placed, positioned above our brick wait one second and then goes back up and places the brick, turns off the gripper, waits one second to make sure it's released, and then returns. So we'll do a quick test of that. Down, turn on, wait, place, turn off, wait. Perfect. Now, of course, you can set up a bit more of a parametric way to do your bricks make more fancy patterns, but this is of course a tutorial for Kuka and not a tutorial for Grasshopper. I might cover something like that in the future. Thanks a lot for watching my tutorial on pick and place with Kuka PRC and Grasshopper. I really hope some of you found this helpful. If you like my channel, please like and subscribe and uh, leave a comment.